Hallelujah. So do Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. We do bear Yahweh for this. Another yom, another time, even as we are entering into the feast of Almighty Yahweh, the feast of trumpet, Yom Kippur, and also as we prepare even for the cleansing, Yisra'ya. As we search our lab, our mind, our hearts for those things that are putrefying, that stink before Almighty Yahweh, that we cast those things off, the sin, corruption, all those things, Yisra'ya, that are displeasing in the sight of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because Yahshua HaMashiach, through him, Yisra'ya, we find our cleansing. It's only through his dabar, his word, that has been made flesh, that there is redemption for us, Yisra'ya, because without that, without Yahshua HaMashiach, there is no cleansing for us. Without Yahshua, there's no imuna. There's no faith to walk in the promises of Almighty Yahweh. But yet we have Yahshua today. And Yahshua, he is our atonement. It is through him, through his offering, his obedience, his zabrak, that we are accepted, that we are able to come before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. You know, I am reminded because occasionally I see those that were brought up in this way just as I was brought up experiencing the same things, nothing no different, young men. Yet when you see them, they have been displaced, they have removed themselves from Yisra'ya. That there is nothing, I don't see anything in their eyes. They're empty. And I am reminded that it is only by the dawn and by taking heed to the midst by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, that we as a people and a nation, we are kept. Hallelujah. There's a message I, I, I am working on, I'm studying, I'm going to preach it too. And I'm going to preach this message because young men are wicked. They're wicked. Well, how do you know that, Zachain? Because I can judge my life. Because I see me. Because I know that without the dumb, there is no tikva. Hallelujah. Your men are wicked. Why? Because Yahweh here has given us the word with all, and we do not take heed. Certainly it's unto the house of Ko Yisrael, but especially you young men that are listening, you're viewing this message, you're looking, you're wicked, you're undone. Your love have not been circumcised by the Torah, the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. We hear about it all the time. I see it. They deny, they renounce any truth. Hallelujah. But that's not what I'm going to speak today. We're in preparation, Israel, for the celebration, the feast of Almighty Yahweh. As we are entering into the feast of trumpets, teruah, that is the sounding of the alarm, is that we make ourselves ready, that we hear the shofar that sounds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that we prepare ourselves. Why? For that which is to come, the battle that is ahead. It awakens us, the sound of the shofar. The Torah of Almighty Yahweh, as it is lifted high, and it is loud, that it awakens the, what, the nephesh. That we open our minds, our ears, and our left unto Almighty Yahweh. So what should we do at this awakening this time? Even as we prepare for the cleanser of the atonement of Almighty Yahweh. And the our king that have prepared and are preparing a wonderful, 
wonderful smorgasbord of truth. Hallelujah. Concerning the fight, this battle of Imuna Yisrael. Hallelujah. But I do want to begin here. Hallelujah. Way. Even as we heard Rayat Dawid Yisrael speak this morning, even concerning the riches of Almighty Yahweh. He has given us great wealth, great riches, and all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. For he is our Peshach Yisrael. So let, let me read this in, first of all in 1 Corinthians. Then I want to read just a few verses in Proverbs. Then I want to move to Leviticus where you are. So we talk about the cleansing. All right? But it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Ruach is given unto every man. Why? To profit himself and all others. That's what it is given us. That's what it's for, that we may profit Israel and all things concerning Almighty Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach. Even this time that we are entering into. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Ruach the word of wisdom, of Hukmar, and to another the words of knowledge by the same Ruach. Is there any difference? Is there any difference, Yisrael? Why is there so many different ideas? and principles of man that we implement into the house called Yisrael. It is not of Almighty Yahweh. It is all the same. We worship Yahweh all the same. His feasts are all the same. It says, let's see what it says right here in Proverbs Mishli. Chapter 8, verse 11. I'm going to read verse 11 through. Let me read just verse 11 in Mishli. Then we'll move on to chapter 16, verse 16. That this wisdom, this wealth, Yisrael, it is greater. It is abundance. And it's in great value unto us, Yisrael. We need the wisdom. We need the hook of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. You know, it's a precious gem. It should be a precious thing unto us. This hook of this wisdom, that that we sell it not, Yisrael. We don't give it. We don't uh, use it foolishly. No. But it is a great gem and of great wealth unto Yisrael. Mishli chapter 8, verse 11. For Hukmar is better than rubies. Yes, it is. And all things that may be desired are not to be compared no. with it. The wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. Do we not think that Yahweh knows what he desires, yeah. his people, yeah. for us to remember or the zakar, to celebrate yeah. these feasts, yeah. the, the times and the season, Yisrael, yeah. that have all been ordained by Almighty Yahweh? So should we just set them to the side? No, should we forget them? No, Again, in chapter 16, verse 16 of Proverbs. How much better is it to get wisdom than of gold? Don't you know that even in Muna faith, as we were here throughout the process of Sukkot, Torah even talks about it being a great rich, riches and value. And I will somewhat allude to that at the end of this message, Yisrael. Right, yeah. It is much better than gold wisdom. And to get understanding... Rather than choice or chosen silver. It is much better. It is much better for us to abide in the wisdom and the understanding and why the purpose of this time. And it's better to understand those things than to understand Christmas. This pagan holiday, this wicked Halloween. You know, it is something as I'm just gathering things here and there preparing for, for Sukkot. The things that we need here and there, Israel. Yes. That even, they're already putting emblems. It's already out there. The pumpkins and the, the, the monsters and all those things. You know, I, I will not buy anything with the, those labels on there. I don't care if it's candy. We just go with them need candy. Hallelujah. 
Why? Because they represent their gods and their feast days of man. But what do we represent? How do we represent Almighty Yahweh in these times of feast, Israel? There's nothing wrong with making banners and writing Torah Mishpah, hanging it here and there. Concerning the, the world do it all the time in their preparation. And it's not even here yet. Just as we are making preparations. We're making preparations, making ourselves ready. Hallelujah. But that's what we should do as a people, as a nation. Also, making sure that our love and our hearts are prepared, Israel, even for this time. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 4. Then I want to move on to Leviticus as we talk about the cleansing, the atonement of Yahshua HaMashiach. That we, in this time, as we prepare for atonement, Israel, that it is heavily on our mind, that we search, that we are reminded of the Mishnah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, of our sins and our present circumstance, and also where Almighty Yahweh has brought us from. Hallelujah. It says in Proverbs 18, chapter 4, that these are the words of a man's mouth, Adam. They are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom is as a flowing brook. That's one thing about a pure flowing brook. The source of that can never be contaminated. Because the source is pure. The intent or the grounding of that, where that wellspring is, it is pure. So whatever touches that, it is washed away. A dead animal could fall in it. It is washed away. You can try the most potent, potent of poisons. When it is dropped into that, it is washed away because it is ever flowing. The purification of that is continually. Just as the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yet that does not give us a license to continually sin before Almighty Yahweh, but it shows the power and the essence of what Yahweh has done. Yeah. That no matter how we have sinned before Almighty Yahweh, how egregious it may be, yeah. yet by the cleansing of the dumb, this wellspring right. of life, right. yeah. right. this purification of life and of Torah and of Mitzvah, yeah. it ever flows. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we are cleansed just right here. That is why the cleansing process, it never ceases. Why? Because of Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, it is still yet alive. The wellspring, it still flows with life even today, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. So if that wellspring is within us, Yisra'ya. That out of our bed, even out of our belly shall flow these wells, these wells of living water. That life comes forth. Not death, but life comes forth. When we touch something, life comes forth. When we speak mitzvah, Torah, when we abide in it, life comes forth. And I'm reminded of those that have gone their own ways. There is no water. They are dried up. There's no wellspring of life. You see the filthiness and the and the uncleanness, even in their bodies and their skin. Are you just talking, am I? Am I just talking? These are wasted words, and it's true. Why? Because Torah speaks this, Israel. Why? Because they have denied Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. And so when we find ourselves, Israel, if we continue to deny the dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach. We need to cleanse it. We need the dumb of Yahshua. We're not going to be pleasing in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh without the dawn, hallelujah. So let me begin here in Reira, Leviticus chapter 23, yes. verse 26. Yes. This is concerning the time, the day, yes. just as we enter into the Feast of Trumpets, which will start on tomorrow evening yes. and go on to Monday evening. Yes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So it says here, Leviticus, and Yahweh, he spoke unto Moshe, saying, also, 
on the tenth of the seventh month, that should be a day of atonement, Yom HaKippurim. And it shall be Kodesh, a Kodesh convocation unto you. We should gather ourselves, just as we shall gather ourselves on the Feast of Trumpets. It should be a Mikra, a Kodesh convocation unto you. And at that time you shall afflict or you shall weaken yourself by fasting, your nephesh, and offer an offering unto Yahweh made by fire. Don't you know even at this time through this feast, as we hear our, our king speak, they're going to speak concerning Imunah, that without that you cannot offer an offering unto Yahweh by fire. It cannot be done without Imunah. We, have, we must have Imuna, Yisrael. Yeah. Even as we move into this, we must move, do it by Imuna. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how it is done. That's how it, it operates, Yisrael. Yeah. No by Imuna. And we enter into this by Imuna. So by fasting, even in this cleansing process, unto Yahweh, we must offer it unto Yahweh by fire. It says in verse 28, And you shall do no work in that day, for it is a day of atonement. It's a day of cleansing. It's a day of washing. You shall make an atonement before Yahweh your Abba. How do we do that? How do we bring what is Sadiq unto Yahweh, Yisrael? What do we bring? Do we know what to bring? Do we know how? To bring it, Israel. Well, first of all, we must bring ourselves. All that we are, our nephesh unto your Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because He requires that as an offering. That we give all unto Him. Absolutely. That means laying down our desires, laying down our lusts, laying down, impelling this body, this flesh. That we may enter into this by a munah, unto Almighty Yahweh. That's how we make our atonement before him. Verse 29. For if any nephesh shall not be afflicted by fasting, in that same day he shall be cut off from among ko Yisrael. You'll be cut off. We must come before the throne, before Almighty Yahweh, by a munah, Yisrael. It's the only way. It's what Yahweh desires and what he commands. That as we enter into the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast, as we are cleansed by the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, enter into Sukkot, that we do it all by Imunah. Now, even, even at this time, Yisrael, we should not do any work in that day for the Day of Atonement. And as we make an atonement before Almighty Yahweh our Abba, verse 29, for any nephesh that shall not be afflicted by fasting, by denying ourselves, yes. by denying oneself, in that same day he shall be cut off from among Kol Yisrael. As again, as I am reminded, there are, cut, there are those that are cut off. Why? From just the commonwealth. From the, the, bay, from the house of Kol Yisrael. They are cut off, Yisrael. And whatsoever nephesh it be that does any work on that same day, Yahweh said, I will destroy them from among his people. Do we think Yahweh is playing? He will kill them. He will destroy them. He will wipe them out. As I have said again, I see nothing in the world. I see nothing in the people. I see nothing. There's nothing there. There's emptiness there. Well, what about the millionaires I came? There's nothing there. Because they don't have Yahshua our atonement. They do not have hukmah. They do not have wisdom. They're not keeping the feast of Almighty Yahweh. They do not desire any part of Yahshua HaMashiach. They are cut off. And if we think Yahweh will not cut us off, Yisrael, and we don't abide by his mission or by his Torah, we are sadly, we are mistaken. But Yahweh, he does not play at all, Yisrael. He is serious about this time. Yes, he is. Verse 31, you should do no matter of work, 
It is a statue now. Yes. It has been established. It has been planted. It has been concrete forever throughout your generations yes. and all a coal of your dwelling, yes. Israel. Yes. The assembly, the house, the bear of coal, Israel. Yes. So have these things been established from the bearer sheath? Yes. It has been established from the bearer sheath. Yes. And this would be a time for us to enjoy. It's a time of great celebration, Hallelujah. of shouting before Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. As we bring our offer ourselves unto Yahweh by fire, that he may consume us, Yisrael, not in his ass, but because he is pleased. Hallelujah. He is pleased by what we have brought and what we are bringing unto him. We bring it ourselves. We bring our all. We bring it our desire. We bring our will unto Almighty Yahweh. And that is to walk just as Yahshua HaMashiach walked. That we please him in all things. That is the offer we offer to him by fire, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will consume. He will consume us with what? His Ahava. Yeah, that's beautiful. He will consume us with his, his yeah. mitzvah, his Torah. That when the flames die down, there will be nothing left of ourselves. Yeah. But it will be all him, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is that not beautiful? Yes, it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. So consume us with the fire, Almighty yeah. Yahweh, of your word and of your anointing. Yeah. That there is nothing left. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Told the Yah. Told the Yah. Yeah. If, you would, if you had this, turn me to Shirak. Shirak chapter 45, verse 2. Do we not think that Yahweh knows what offering is necessary at any time? The house the code of Ko Yisrael, Adam Mizraim, do you not think that Moshe, the wisdom that was given unto him as Yahweh speaks to him, that he did not know what offering, a haram, was needed for the cleansing, whether of leprosy, any kind of sicknesses or sin. They knew what to offer unto Almighty Yahweh. Let me read this. Know exactly what to offer unto Almighty Yahweh. So does Yahweh know? What should we bring? What should we offer unto Yahweh? Hallelujah. This is what it says here in Shirak. 45 and 12. It says, with a gold crown upon his mitre, inscribed like a signet with Kodesh, yes, and destruction to be prized, the work of an expert. Mm -hmm. yes. The delight of his eyes, richly adorned, before his time, there will never were such a beautiful thing. No outsider ever put them on, but only his sons, Aharon. Yes. Only Aharon, his sons, Israel, yes. was able to put that on. And his descendants, continually or perpetually. Yes. Hit Zabacha shall be holy. That means the whole offering consumed. Burnt twice every day continually. Moshe, he ordained him and anointed him with Kodesh oil. It was an everlasting covenant before him and for his descendants all the days of Hashemiah. What? To minister? To bring the Mishvah, the Torah, to Yahweh and to serve his, the Kohen and bless his name forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 He said he chose him out all living things to offer as about an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. So he chose what needed to be offered unto Almighty Yahweh out of every living thing. It wasn't anything dead. It wasn't anything main or anything sick. He said also he offered 
a sweet smelling smell, and a pleasing odor as a memorial portion to make an atonement for the people. He said, in his commandment, he gave him authority and statute and judgment to teach Yaakov the testimonies and to enlighten Israel with his Torah. Have not Yahweh already picked out our Zaba'ah offering in Yahshua HaMashiach? There, had, there is none like him. The Abad name, his mitzvah, his will is written in him, Yisrael. And for every generation after, oh, we're not after this generation. We're after this generation. And yet Yahweh has anointed us by Yahshua HaMashiach, this perfect offering for our atonement, Yisrael. He is beautiful. He is perfect. He is everything that Yahweh has desired to wash and to take away our sins, Israel. And he is pleasing before Almighty Yahweh. Yahshua is pleasing before Almighty Yahweh. Our offerings that we bring before Almighty Yahweh, it must be pleasing, Israel. It must be perfect. And if we will examine our love and examine our heart, we're far beyond perfect. I'm far beyond perfect. Hallelujah. Might as well get it out now. I need Yahshua HaMashiach. I need Yahshua HaMashiach. I need the words of Almighty Yahweh. I need the cleansing of his atonement. There's nothing I can bring of myself that is perfect. But I can bring all unto Almighty Yahweh today. In Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Because there's no other way. There's no other way to be cleansed, Israel. But through the offering that Yahweh has provided for us in Yahshua HaMashiach. Were there not a, a lamb or a ram caught in the thick of the bush? A pure offering? It was prepared. That ram was made ready. It was already, it was there the whole time. Yes. Yahshua, he is here for us, Yisrael. Yes. Why? Because Yahweh knows what we have need of. Yes. Yes. And he knows that we need. I know that I need Yahshua Hamashiach today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. So let us continue to keep his mishfah, his Torah, yes. before our faces, Yisrael, in this time of celebration unto Almighty Yahweh. Even as we enter into Sukkoth, Israel, yes. our atonement in Yahshua HaMashiach. Right, Do we have assurance? Yes. We have the utmost, the greatest of assurance in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Why? Because we have Imuna, mm -hmm. and we expect, we wait patiently, because that which Yahweh has spoken, he has promised it is to come. It's not hope. It's not wishing, as they say, wishful thinking. But because we, Yada, we know. It's because we know Yisrael. So it says here in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Because this is our insurance, Yisrael, and our atonement in Yahshua HaMashiach. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I'm going to read verse 8. To verse 11. Hallelujah. All right. It says here, but Yahweh, he commends his Ahava towards us. He commends it towards us, Israel. And that while we were yet sinners, Yahshua HaMashiach, he gave his very life. He gave his life, his dumb for us. He died for us. Much more then, being now justified by Yahshua's precious dumb, 
We shall be delivered from wrath through the eye, the anger of Almighty Yahweh, through Yahshua HaMashiach, through Almighty Yahweh. Verse 10. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled, that is receiving the favor of Almighty Yahweh. It's only through Yahshua that we receive this favor of Almighty Yahweh. It was given back to us, Yisrael Yah. Received to Yahweh by the death of Yahshua HaMashiach. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be delivered by his life. By his atonement. By the dawn. By that body that that rested there on that state, Israel. We have atonement through Yahshua HaMashiach. Why would we not impel this body? Why would we not lay this flesh upon the stake, Israel, for him, for Yahshua, knowing what he has given unto us? Torah says that hardly would a man, even for a righteous one. Torah says, what is a righteous one? When Torah talks about one being Sadiq or righteous, yeah. it is one that walks after the Torah of the Mishra. Yeah. How do we want a man, an Adam, give his life for one such as that? Yeah. It is it's a scarce thing. He, he thinks twice, three times. Yeah. But Yahshua HaMashiach, he gave himself freely yeah. unto us. Yeah. And we, as a people, as a nation, being full of sin, yet he yeah. gave himself that we may have this life in Almighty Yahweh, that we will be acceptable in his presence. Hallelujah. So let us allow the Mishvah, the Torah of life, to cleanse us, to wash us. Let us prepare ourselves, Israel, today. Hallelujah. And throughout this feast of time of celebration, as we zakar, as we remember what Almighty Yahweh he has done through Yahshua HaMashiach. It is an act that is so great it cannot be expressed by just mere words, Yisrael Yah. Why? Because Yahweh, he chose Yahshua HaMashiach, our Zabah, our offering unto him. He chose him, Yisrael Yah. That is the beauty of, this, of it. That he chose Yahshua HaMashiach. I will turn to uh, Colossians Chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. The great atonement for our sins, Israel. And again, we move by Imuna. Should we not fight? Should we not lay hold to Imuna? No matter what circumstances or trials, we must hold on to this that the cleansing, the Dhamma Yahshua Hamashiach, it is much more than sufficient. Because what else will we have when we stand before the judgment seat of Almighty Yahweh? Riches are not going to deliver you. Your, quote, good works, unquote, are not going to deliver you. Well, I've given this and I've given that. That's not going to work before Almighty Yahweh. He's going to look for one thing. And that is the dumb. He's going to look for one thing, and that is Imuna, that you stood firm on his promises and on this cleansing of Yahshua HaMashiach, the blood, his offering unto us. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. He says, to give Todah thanks unto Almighty Yahweh, our Abba, which has made us fit. My fit. He had made us fit to be partakers in the inheritance of the condition and light. We, as using the word fit, have not done a tough job of making ourselves ready. Whether it's physically, help me y'all, or in ruach. But he says that through, um, through Yahshua HaMashiach, he has made us fit to be partakers 
in this inheritance of the condition in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Yahshua HaMashiach, in whom we have redemption through his dom, even the forgiveness, the cleansing, the washing of our sins. And only the, the atonement by the dom, it has to be by the blood, Israel, is the cleansing of this washing of our sins made possible. Hallelujah, that we can abide in the light of Almighty Yahweh. And have we fallen short in that? Yes, right, yeah, sure we have. I have. Let's see what it has to say in Romeo. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 concerning this. Have we not come short? I have come short. Romeo says this right here. Chapter 3, verse 23. For coal... Is that not what it says? Yes, yes. Are we looking at that? Yes. For all yes. have sin. Mm -hmm. yes. But yet we say to y'all, where have we sinned? Have I sinned? Oh, yeah. Yahweh says all have sinned. The Torah says all have sinned. Yes. All of you. Yes. All have sinned. Yes. No, no. And have come short of the splendor, of the excellence of Almighty Yahweh. But he expresses this in verse 24. But being justified, being justified, many times we try to justify ourselves. We always try to find a reason, but we are without excuse because God has given us the world with all. He has given us the Torah. He has set me, he has set Adam, he has set warriors and our lives, Israel. He has said his Torah. You hear the Mishvah, you hear the Torah. But do we take heed to ourselves? He says, be justified freely by his free unmerited Ahava, his love, and favor through redemption. That in Yahshua HaMashiach, we find it in Yahshua HaMashiach, whom Yahweh has sent forth to be the propitiation, the atonement, through Imuna and his dom yes. to declare his righteousness. Yahweh is declaring his righteousness. His righteousness. We have no righteousness to declare. But Yahweh, he said, to declare his righteousness for remission of sin that are past. Yes. That are past. Yes. When the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach cleanses, it cleanses all sin. Yes. And it's all past, yes. Israel. Yes. Just as I was talking, the life of that flowing brook, that stream, anything that is dropped in there, it is all, it passes. It is all past, Israel. Through what? The forbearance and tolerance of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 26, Israel. He says, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just. And the justifier of him, who what? Who believes. Who has this imuna? Who fights for this imuna in Yahshua HaMashiach? We must believe Israel. We must believe in the dawn. We must believe. We must trust in the offering in Yahshua HaMashiach. Have, we come, have not we come this far by imuna? As the old song says, by walking in his Torah. Walking in his mitzvah. Hallelujah. We have come this far by Imuna. And I has, as I have said before, the Arcadian, the preparing, have prepared themselves for a wonderful feast yes, we're going to have it. of Torah, yes. of exaltation of the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. That we do not come into this empty, but I can assure you we will not leave this Sukkoth any empty by any other means. Sometimes as we discuss the feast among ourselves, it increases, and it does increase every year. Wisdom, understanding, I can see the growth every year. 
as we honor the feast days of Almighty Yahweh. We set all other things aside, yes, we will. and we honor his day. Yes, we, will. we have our, our king, the our whole king, Yisrael, yes. they're saving their vacation days yes. for this time that is coming. They have the right to do whatever with those days. But yet it's in the desire of their love to be here with us. To take time. And believe me, Israel, y'all, we're making the preparations that things will be comfortable, beautiful. And you will be comforted. Plenty to eat. Plenty of Torah. And also fellowship, Israel, y'all. So come, Israel. Don't let anything... Stop you for obeying the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. You have people that go through great means to keep Christmas. They fly hundreds of miles to be with their mama, their grandmama, and their parents. And it's all a false cause. This is not a false cause. This is not a false cause. So let us press. Let us fight Israel to be with one another, to join together. Hallelujah for this great time, this great event. Told Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving on. Jeremiah speaks concerning affliction. And not only that great affliction, but in that also the favor of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahshua HaMashiach, our atonement. It says here in Jeremiah chapter 36, verse 5. And Yermiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up, and I cannot go into the bayet of Almighty Yahweh. Therefore, you go and read in the scroll, or the roll, which I have written from my mouth the word of Almighty Yahweh. That's what he says. The word of Almighty Yahweh in the ears of the people in Yahweh's Bayah in his house. Upon the fasting day, which is the day that is to come, very shortly, Thursday, of that eve, concerning this day of atonement. It's a day of fasting. It's a day of setting your desires aside. And he says, as we go on, and also you shall read in them the ears of all Yehuda that come out of their cities. So the people that are coming forth out of their cities, out of their places, that they may hear the mitzvah of the Torah that is being read, even at this time of fasting. Verse 7. That it may be they will present their supplications before Almighty Yahweh and will return everyone from his evil way. Should we not present supplications unto Almighty Yahweh? That we return unto Almighty Yahweh. That we resist and that we set aside our evil way, Israel. That we present supplications unto Almighty Yahweh, and we return everyone from his evil way. For great is the anger of the eye of Almighty Yahweh, the fury of Yah, that has been pronounced against this people. So have not the eye or the anger of Almighty Yahweh, his judgment, have they not been pronounced, Israel? Yah? We've heard of the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. We see the examples through Torah and throughout Scripture. So we must turn, Israel. We must atone for our sins. That's the only way that should turn the aft or the anger of Almighty Yahweh is bringing the offering of atonement. Hallelujah. Before him. Why? Because his anger, it is against us, Israel. So let us barak Yahweh. Let us to the Yah for the dawn. To the Yah for the dawn. A Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us look at this in Exodus. Praise 
Exodus chapter 29, verse 33. Yahweh, Yahweh he does command an offering unto Kol Yisrael. At this time, he was commanded unto the Levites, or the Levites. But it is commanded unto us. Are we not those that carry the midst of the Torah? And his process, it has not changed, Israel. He doesn't change. It says in Shemoth, chapter 29, verse 33. And they shall eat those things wherewith the atonement was made. And consecrate and set them apart. But a stranger shall not eat thereof, because they are Kodesh. So those things have been made Kodesh, Israel. You know, the atonement, Israel, our atonement in Yahshua HaMashiach. He bids us to come as we are, come unto him. Everyone, we present ourselves, our body unto Almighty Yahweh. So we are able to take uh, this process by Imuna that we partake of Yahshua HaMashiach. We partake of his suffering. We partake of the dawn. Yes, Why? Because he is our atonement. He has been made clean for us, Israel. Yeah. Verse 36, as it goes down. I want to skip down. Verse 36. And you shall offer an offering every day, a bullock for the sin offering for atonement. And you shall cleanse the altar where you have made an atonement for it. And you shall atone it. That is to set it apart, make it clean. So that's what Yahweh desires every day. Every day a bullock. We don't have enough as we hear continually. Why? Because we should be reminded that only the atonement of Yahshua HaMashiach brings the fullness of obedience or act before Almighty Yahweh. There are those that still, they sacrifice the bullock, they slay, and they think that that covers the sin. It does not. Why? Because afterwards there is always remembrance of that. But if we will allow the Torah of the Mitzvah, Yahshua HaMashiach, to come in, to cleanse us, Yisrael, that there will be no remembrance of sin. No remembrance of the wickedness or transgression before him. We must allow it to wash, to cleanse us, to purify us. And there will be no remembrance of sin. There will be no remembrance. There will be no, no uh, conscience of of sinning before Almighty Yahweh, if we will allow, continue to allow his Torah, Yahshua HaMashiach, the Dom, to cleanse us, to wash us, and to purge us, Yisrael. Why? Because Yahweh does not change. He yet still requires of us this offering. But we offer Yahshua HaMashiach. That's all that I have. That's all that we have, Yisrael. And we are all for Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Still concerning the offering of the atoning of our sins, Israel. So we heard of Yahweh. He does not change, does he not? He still requires an offering every day. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, verse 10. By that desire we are now Kodesh, through the offering of the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he's offered himself once for all. Now that is an offering, a Zabab above Zabab. So we offer, he offered himself once for all, but yet it is continually. It is continually, Yisrael. It is continual, it's perpetual. It doesn't die. It doesn't die, Israel. See, once you cut the throat of that bullock or that lamb or the pigeon, the dove, whatever it is, that's, it. that's the end of that. It, you cannot reuse it. You have to get another one and another one and another one. Why? Because the house of Israel continued to sin. 
and to sin and to sin. And if it were not for the prayer of Almighty Yahweh through Yahshua HaMashiach, then we would exhaust every resource. Every resource. We don't have much. But it would not even for the sins of the world be enough. There will not be enough resources. You look at resources now. You know, if the world would do things right, which they, it is ordained by the plan of Almighty Yahweh, there would be means for every man to have, to eat, to possess, to be happy. But because of sin, Israel, and transgressing the Torah of the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, it is all thrown out of balance, and that balance being the mitzvah of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Every man seeks him for himself. What's for me, myself, and I? Denying the power of Torah. So even at that, the lamb, the bull, I would not be enough. Why? Because they would have to slay one all the time. All the time. But we have, he has given us Yahshua HaMashiach. That by one, one time he offers himself for all. He offers himself for us, Israel. And it's continual. He's not dead. I recall the old song in my youth. Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hand. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. One more time. Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, the Torah's not dead. It's still alive. I can feel it in my hands. I can feel it in my feet. I can feel him all over me. Oh, the mitzvah's not dead. He's still alive. Yahweh's mitzvah, they're not dead. They're still alive. Yahweh's mitzvah's not dead. His Torah still alive. I can feel it in my hands. I can feel it in my feet. I can feel his ruach over me. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, way. Hallelujah. So Yahshua, he gave himself once for all. And he's not dead, Yisrael. Right, he's still alive. He's still alive. So we brought Almighty Yahweh. We bring an atonement before him by fire. And that atonement being Yahshua HaMashiach. So let us bring our offerings of praise. Let us not hold back. Let us shout. Let us rejoice. Let us lift up his name, Yisrael. Right, why? Because Yahweh, he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised, Israel. Right, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Yahshua HaMashiach, he gives himself once for all. Verse 11. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. And every Kohen stands daily, ministering and offering, oftentimes the same Zabbat. The same offering. Which never take away the sins. Verse 12. But in this Adam man, yes. after he had offered one Zavak for sins, continuously. Did I say it's continuously? Continually he offered himself once, but it is continual. It's perpetual. It does not die sat down on the right hand of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, he has done this for Yahshua HaMashiach, this offering, the Pesach, this Sabbath, Yisra'ya. But should we sin? Should we continue on in sin? Has he not given us the wherewithal that we walk without sin, Yisra'ya? It says here in Shirak chapter 5, verse 5, It says here, do not be so confident without 
the fear of atonement that you add sin to sin. Should we be without fear? Israel? No, sir. Without fear, will we continue to sin? So we should realize the seriousness of, of this hour, this time, yes. that we don't continue to sin before Almighty Yahweh. He has provided Yahshua HaMashiach our atonement. And he's the only atonement to take away our sin continually, but not for us to continue to, to create and to do acts against the Dom or against Almighty Yahweh, against his word, Yisrael Yah. Why? Because it says, Surat, you will add sin unto sin. And we know that Yahweh, he hates sin. And he hates those that commit right. continually to sin, Yisrael Yah. Don't let no one fool you. They say he hates the sin and not the sinner. That is not true. He hates the sinner. It is lies. Why? Because those sins that is committed by the, sin, by the sinner, it comes from a lev that is uncircumcised. And Yahweh, he will destroy. He will destroy you, Israel. Moving on, Hebrews, back up a little to chapter 9, verse 15. So we heard what Sharat had to say. Let's say what it says here in, he, in he, Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. For this cause, Yahshua is the mediator of the renewed covenant of this Brit Hadassah. By means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant. That's the blood offerings, Israel. Yah. That was the first covenant. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Should we receive that? Do we receive that by Imuna Israel today? Hallelujah. It is ours. Yahweh has given that unto us. So we what? Patiently wait for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We patiently wait for it, Yisrael. Yeah. Verse 16. For were a testimony or testament, which is the will, it's the desire, there must also be of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testimony is of no force, is of no power, no excellence, after, uh, until after yeah. the man or that one has died. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all why the testator lives. Sure. Is it not true? There are certain aspects of even a will. When you write a will, when you pass, it does not even go into effect until that one passes or goes away or he dies. For this reason, not even the first Brit was dedicated without the Dom or without Dom. For when Moshe has spoken every commandment to all the people according to the Torah, he took the Dom of the calves or the goats with water and with scarlet wood and with hyssop and with the sprinkling of both the, the book and all the people saying, this is the dawn of the testament which Yahweh has commanded unto you. That's what he commanded. That was the first covenant. The testament unto Yahweh for the remission of sin. It goes on in verse 21. But moreover, he has sprinkled with the dawn both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Verse 22. And almost... All things are by the Torah purged with dung. And without the shedding of dung, there is what? No. No. No remission. Without dung, without blood, there's no remission. There is none. You can say what you will, say what you may. Without dung, there is no Remission. There's no forgiveness. There's no atonement. Turn me to Exodus. I want to move quickly. Exodus chapter 32. 
God wants to look at this also concerning this atonement for our sins. And even at this time, Moshe, he prayed continually. His prayer went up before Almighty Yahweh concerning the nation of Israel at this time. Brought Yahweh for his Ahava, his loving kindness towards us, Israel. It says here in Exodus 32, verse 30. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe said to the people, You have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up before Yahweh, prevent you now. Prevent you. I shall make an atonement for yes. your sin. Now he said prevention. That I may make an atonement for your sins. Verse 31. And Moshe, he returned unto Almighty Yahweh and said, Oh, this people, they have sinned a great sin. And have made them gods of gold. Have we not made gods of gold? We make gods of gold. We place things before Almighty Yahweh. And they seem brilliant. They seem of great wealth. They seem to have some weight. Where even there is a time that shall come when men will throw all their gold into the streets. They'll realize that all this that we see is just vanity. It's all vanity, Israel. Vanity is all vanity, saith the preacher man. So we continually to make vessels of gold, our golden cast, which have no life, they have no breath, and they sure cannot atone for your sins. But yet we place great wealth in those things that do not last, and those things that have pleasure but only for a moment, Israel. Yeah. So he returned in verse 31 and unto Almighty Yahweh and said, All these people that have sinned a great sin and have made to them gods of gold. Turn with me to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. For we continually to make these things, we continue to put things before Almighty Yahweh. And we charge them as gold. It says here in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6, that by steadfast loving kindness and truth, yeah. iniquity, it is purged. Yeah. Yeah. It is atoned for. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way. There's nothing that that golden calf could, could have done for those people there that came out of Israel. And there's nothing that our golden calves do for us. Cannot atone by, for our sins. But it says here in Proverbs that by steadfast Ahava, loving kindness and truth, yeah, and iniquity, it is purged. Yeah. And by the fear, did we not hear about the fear earlier? Yeah. That without fear we would add sin unto sin. But by the fear of Almighty Yahweh, men depart from evil. So we must fear Yisrael. And in that fear, we should desire and ahava almighty Yahweh that we not sin Yisrael before him. We not sin before him. Hebrews. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we not happy, Israel? Are we not glad? Is it not a, a sense of relief knowing that as we enter into the feast that we have our Peshach? It is ready for us. Yeah. Yahshua is ready for us, Israel. Yeah. So what we do, what do we do? We prepare ourselves. Yes, I will. We make ourselves ready. Yes. Yes. We make ourselves ready. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. He says here, and unto Yahshua, the immediator of the renewed Brits, the atonement for our sins. It has been renewed, Yisrael. It has not been done away with because still yet Yahweh is requiring the dumb. He requires the dumb. 
Yet we have brought everything before him. As we have heard our golden calves, we have made them. Yeah. We have sinned before Almighty Yahweh. But this is the only way, as we have heard, through the dom of Yahshua. And to Yahshua, the mediator of the renewed Brit, mm -hmm. and to the dom of sprinkling, that speaks better things than that of even Abel. Yeah. Even his obedience, what he has done in obedience, it speaks, it speaks even greater things and volumes unto us, Israel. On that same note, Leviticus 6.26. Leviticus 6, 26, concerning the sprinkling, the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. So it speaks even greater things than the obedience of Abel, that he brought what was desired at that time before Almighty Yahweh in obedience. Why? Because Yah, he was pleased in his offering, was he not? Yeah. He looked down upon him. And the Torah says that he had respect. He saw his obedience and his labor, that he brought what was required, and he looked upon his offering. It says here in Leviticus, where you're in chapter 6, verse 26. It says that the Kohen that offers it for sin, and it's talking about the Zabak. In the Kodesh place, it shall be eaten. Yeah. And in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation, whosoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be atoned for, or shall be Kodesh. That's what it says. And when there is sprinkled of the dom, therefore upon the garment, yeah. you shall wash that thereon. It was sprinkled in the Kodesh place. Talking about the sprinkling here, Yisrael. Yeah. If you would move with me to Shemoth, Exodus chapter 29, verse 20. Why? Because it is by the dom that always sets us apart. Nothing else. It sets us apart, Yisrael. We should be different. We, desi we should desire to be different. Uh, that's we should not even desire to even look like the world. I don't want to. to dress like the world. Not. To act like the world. All of our aspirations should come from right here. Yeah. Come out of the Torah, the Mishvah yeah. of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Exodus 29, 20. Mm -hmm. It speaks about the killing of this ram. 29 and 20. Then shall you kill the ram yeah. and take of his blood and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Ahabron and upon the tip of the right ear of his son and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot and sprinkle the dung upon the altar round about. So even from the head down to the foot, yes. the dom was applied. That's all right. Does that not speak great things of Yisrael? Yeah, the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah, it leaves nothing out. Nothing. It washes us from the crown, even from the very top, all the way down to the sole of the feet, Yisrael. Yeah. The dom of Yahshua, it covers us. Yeah. It atones for our sins. Verse 21, continuing. And you shall take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aharon and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons that is with him. And he shall be set apart. Now again, the Dhamma Yahshua, does it not cover all of our sins? Even this garment that has been spotted by the flesh. The dom covers it all, Yisrael. Yeah. Why? That it may be atoned for. It is our atonement, the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Oh. Even as this act is shown here, and it had to be done, just as it is spoken here, it would not have been of any use, Yisrael. Yeah. So the dom of Yahshua, even our atonement, it covers us from yeah. 
our head to our feet, and even the garment that has been spotted, Yisrael, is covered by the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Yes. And the Torah says he shall be set apart. So we are set apart. We are set apart, Yisrael, by the dawn, the pouring of the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. We are different. We are not like the world. Yes. We have been set aside for the service and for yes. Yahweh's his tough pleasure, his hafiz. Right. So the bodies and the garments being covered for the atonement, which is the service of Almighty Yahweh at this time, and his garment and his son's garment and the garments that were with him, they were all covered, Israel. Yes. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12 and verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So should we as a people, we know we come before the throne, the hostage of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. But it should not be that we continually break his Torah, his misfire. It says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. That at any time you were without Yahshua Hamashiach, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant, the promise, having no tikvah, yeah. having no tikvah, had no imuna, yeah. no tikvah. We need tikvah. We have to have tikvah, Yisrael. Having no tikvah, and we were without the word or the mitzvah yes. of Almighty Yahweh. But now in Yahshua HaMashiach, who sometimes after afar off made, we were met, we are sometimes afar off, yes. we are now made nigh. Yes. Why? How? By the dawn. We are made nigh. We are brought near. We are made ready, yes. Israel. Beautiful. The preparation of that by the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? For the atoning of our sins. So we have been brought near. We should not be afar off, Israel. Yeah? That we cannot hear the voice or even hear the shofar. But by the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach, we have been brought near. That is a turning. We shoot. We turn back unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Turn me to Gileana, Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. There's only one cleansing for us. And as we have heard, it is by the dom. Yahweh required the, blood, the dom and Bereshith. And he also requires the dom now. It says in Revelation, Gileana chapter 1, verse 4. It says that, Yohanan, to the seven congregations that are in Asia, the free unmerited Ahava and favor be unto you and shalom from him which is and was and which is to come. Yeah, yeah. And from the seven Ruhakim, which are before his throne. And from Yahshua HaMashiach, who is a faithful witness. Is he not a faithful witness? Is not he Imuna, our Imuna in Yahshua HaMashiach? And the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, to him that has Ahava, he loved us, Yisrael, and has washed us Hallelujah. from our sins. Yes. And what? The Torah says, in his own yes. dom. He washed us from our sins yes. by his own dom. He did, he did not use a bull, he didn't use a ram. It was by mm -hmm. his own dom. That's what he did. It was by his own dom. Will we do that for a man? As I said, scarcely for a righteous man would one die. But Yahshua HaMashiach 
He has cleansed us by his own dom. Hallelujah. And I told Yahweh for that, Israel. Hallelujah. For the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, for here is our patient. So even from this time forward, let us be in Zakar in remembrance of the acts which he has done. And let us move into this time, into this Shabbaton, with great rejoicing, with praising, with told out unto Yahweh, as the sound of the shofar, as it goes forth, to remind us, to awaken us, to prepare us, Israel, that our minds are open, even these days, even unto atonement. Hallelujah. As we are anointed by the dawn and the oil of Yahshua HaMashiach. I do just want to read just a few moments here, Yisrael, as we bring this to a close today. It was somewhat talking about Imuna, as our, our king will speak during Sukkot concerning this fight, this battle of Imuna. And what Imuna, or what we say, called faith, it is one having full assurance. It is that which is established and it stands. Right. Not hope, not wishing, yeah. I like that. but knowing that which Yada is established, Glory. that Yahweh has established Israel. Yah. It is settled. No arguing about it. it There's no changing. It is, it is forever settled. It's a few, full assurance without any doubt. That's, fact. Well, that's why we must have Imuna. We are a few, full assurance without a doubt that the Dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. it has cleansed us from all of our sins. Yes, it and it's the only offering that is acceptable yes, before Almighty Yahweh that's, that's as, a, as our Pesach. It also expresses in faithfulness one that is loyal without turning, without compromise, yes. a warrior. He does not compromise. He fights unto the death for that which he has imuna in. And he does not waver. He doesn't turn. No matter what is before him, even though he knows he's giving his life, it is for the cause. So he is loyal. One is full of truth. Yes. Full of truth, without lies, without any kind of deceit. One that performs under the promises. Yes. Without wavering. We know that Yahweh, he has promised us eternal life. So we should perform without wavering. Yes, yes. Why? Because the life, the eternal life is there. It has provided. He has provided eternal life in Yahshua yes. HaMashiach. Yes. So just a few scriptures here. Maccabees. I'm reading Maccabees chapter 1 verse 1. Before I bring this to a close today. It says here in 2 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm going to move quickly. It says, The brethren, the Yahudim, that be at Jerusalem and in the land of Yahuda, he calls to the brethren of the Yahudim that there are throughout Mizraim health and shalom. So help and shalom to call Yisrael yeah. that are scattered abroad. He said, may the husband of Almighty Yahweh and his Ahava be unto you. Yeah. And, the, and remember his covenant that he has made with Abram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Yeah. The Torah says his faithful servant. That's what it says in 2 Maccabean. Verse 3. And give you all a lev to serve him. Yes. Don't we want a lev to serve him, Yisrael? Yeah. This is his yeah. Pala, his prayer yes. in Maccabees. Yes. And give you all a lev to serve Almighty Yahweh. 
and to do his tough pleasure, to do his will. And with tough courage and with a willing mind. He says in verse 4, and open your lips in his Torah and in his commandments, that our lips, our minds are open, that we're here to show forth, we're here to sounding of his mitzvah, his Torah, and send you shalom. Yeah. So this is to all of you, Koyuz, right, that are listening by Viv Live Stream, yeah. that are listening by our small radio station here, yeah. this shalom, this prayer. Yeah. Verse 5. And that Almighty Yahweh may hear your prayers and be at one with you, that he'll be Ekar, one with you, and never forsake you in time of trouble. Hallelujah. Yahweh will never forsake us in time of trouble. Verse 6. And now we be here, we're praying for you. And it goes on to somewhat express the situation. You have to read this book of Maccabees. But I want to just break this down for us, Yisrael, y'all, as we prepare for this great time in Yahshua HaMashiach. It says here, What time as Demetrius had reigned, in the 118th, 89th year, we the Yahudim, we have wrote unto you, an extremity of trouble that came upon us in those years. Yeah. So even at that still, the prayer did not cease unto Kol Yisrael. From that, that Yasson or Jason and his company revolted from the Kodesh land of the kingdom and burned the porch and the shed, and they shed innocent dumb. He says, then we pray unto Yahweh, and we were heard, and offered also the sabbat of fine flour and lighted lamps and set forth loaves. And now see that you keep the Feast of Tabernacles. We must keep the Feast of Tabernacles, Israel. We must keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Verse 10. And in the 186th year, the people that were in Jerusalem and Yehuda and the council of Judas sent greetings and help to Artithius, King Potabilus, master, who was of the stock of the anointed Kohim, and to the Yehudim that were in Mizraim, Egypt. And so much as Yahweh has delivered us from great perils, we thank him highly Hallelujah. as having Hallelujah. been in battle against a king. Yes. So even those great trials, those things that were seen right. and the pains and the hurt, they said as even we went up against a great king, True. yet Yahweh has delivered us. So Yahweh delivers us, Israel, yes. out of all troubles, as even we have gone up against a great king. Why? Because we hold fast to Imuna. Yeah. We have faith in his promises, and we stand sure we do not waver, yeah. no matter what comes our way. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yeah. Told to Yah. Yeah. I want to read here into Helium, chapter 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, yeah. but we will zakar, we will remember the name of Yahweh, our Abba. Hallelujah. So do we remember his name? There is no other name. Hallelujah. Enoch, quickly. Will we not put our imuna, our faith in Yahweh, Yisrael? It says here in Enoch chapter 63, verse 1. In those days were the governors of the kings who possessed the land shall plead that he may give them a little breathing, a little space, yeah. a little pre people. From the lot of the messenger of his punishment to whom they have been delivered. So this is a people that trust in their riches, men of renown. Yeah. 
that displeased Almighty Yahweh in their acts and their deeds. And yet now Yahweh has sent his Malak, his messenger, with judgment. And they're asking for just a little deliverance. Just to allow us to repent before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. Did he give him that reprieve? Let me read on. That's why we must walk by Imunah, Yisrael, not by our own lusts, yes. not by the words of man, yes. but by the words of Almighty Yahweh. They said, just a little reprieval at the punishment of his Malak, his messenger, who he has delivered unto us, so that they may fall and worship before Yahweh of hosts yes. and confess their sins before him. I'm not Yahweh at this time. He has given us space, Israel. Yeah. He has caused us to Zakar to remember yeah. his Mishra and his Torah. Yeah. See, these men, they were afflicted so by the messenger that there was not any kind of reprieve or no place that they can repent before Almighty yeah. Yahweh. Verse 2. He said, They shall bless and magnify Yahweh of hosts, saying, Bless is Yahweh of hosts. Now remember, the Malat, the messenger, has yeah. been sent. Yeah. Yahweh's judgment is heavy. This is as they are asking for reproval, what they would do. They shall bless and magnify Yahweh of hosts, saying, Blessed is Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh of kings, Yahweh of rulers and of masters, of the rich, Yahweh of splendor, and our Yahweh of hukmah, of wisdom. He says that your power exposes every secret thing from generation to generation, and your splendor it's forever yeah. and ever. Yeah. Deep are all your mysteries and numberless. And your righteousness is beyond accounting. Sure so your righteousness is beyond accounting. It said, now we have come to know that we should honor and magnify and barat Yahweh of kings. Yeah. Him who rules over all kings. Verse 5. Moreover, they shall say, would that someone would give us a chance so that we would honor and praise and have imuna before Yahweh's splendor. Yeah, Yahweh has given us the opportunity that we have imuna, that we fear before his presence, Israel. Yeah. That we exalt him, that we barak him. Yeah. Verse 6. Yeah. And this time, however, we are begging for a little rest. But he said, in the begging, we have found none. Yeah. We have found no reproval. Yahweh has judged us and judged us for our sins because we have not brought this a big offering is about before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. See, they trusted in their imuna, their faith was in, was in things, yeah. was in their riches, was in their wealth and their authority, and it was not in Almighty Yahweh. So our imuna must be in Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Yeah. Moving on, verse 6. This time, however, we are begging for a little rest, but we find not. We pursue it, but we procure yeah. it not. Light has vanished from before us, and darkness has become our inhabitation forever and ever. Because we have formerly... Neither we had Imuna, nor have the name of Yahweh of hosts and of kings, nor have honored Almighty Yahweh in all his creation. He said, we had no Imuna. We did not honor Almighty Yahweh in his creation and of the marvelous things he had done. We ought to have. Don't you hear the repentance and the pleading? But they said there is no reprieval. So let us move by Imuna Yisrael. In Torah, because it is concrete, it is laid, it is sure. We have no reason to doubt it, Israel. We have no reason. We should not doubt. We should not trust in things of the arm of flesh and of man, and what we think we have and what we can do, but only in the dom of Yahshua Hamashiach, only in the Muna, only in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He said, "We have put," and I'm going to say it this way. He said, "We have put our hopes." Upon the scepters of empires. What was he saying? Upon the strength of nations yeah, yeah. and the strength of 
being able to war, have means to war, weaponry. We had our emunah and our trust, our hope in those things. And it should have been an almighty Yahweh. Verse 8. Now on the day of our hardship and our tribulation, he is not delivering us. And we have no chance to become believers. We have no chance to have imuna, to trust, to stand, and to fight. For our sovereign master, he is yet faithful in all his works. Is not his judgment even in this? Is it not just? And they even know at that time, you know, he is faithful. We have failed him. We have rejected his name. But he is faithful in judging us. He says he is faithful in all of his works and just judgment and his righteousness and his judgment has no respect of persons. Yahweh, he has no respect. Neither for king, not for servant. But only for his misfire and his Torah and those that walk with obedience faithfully and that stand upon the misfire the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 I want to read this because it's, it's a beautiful thing, Israel. Every word of Yahweh is pure. Yeah. But it says here in Ezra, as I mentioned before the teaching today, the treasures and the wealth of one that finds Imunah. So it says here, it expresses a little bit here in Ezra, 3rd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 1. And he said unto me in the beginning, when the earth was made and before the borders of the world stood, yeah. or ever the winds blew, it says in verse 2, before the thundering and the lightning, and before the fountains of paradise were laid. Verse 3. He said, and before the flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitudes of Melikim were gathered together. It says, before all this, the creation, and all things were established. Or ever the heights of the air were lifted up, and before the measures of the firmament were named. Or ever the chimneys of Zion were ever hot. It says here in verse 6, And before the present years were sought out, and ever the inventions of that which is now sin were turned, before they were sealed, that have gathered imuna for treasure. Yeah. So even before all those things, the gathering of imuna is as for a treasure mm -hmm. of great wealth. It is of great uh, magnitude to possess and to have imuna. Yeah. That even before the beginning of all things, the Torah expressed it as being a great treasure. So the imuna, his Torah, his Mishnah was before all. Before anything was created, it was there. It was established, the imuna of Almighty Yahweh. Quickly here in Wisdom 3.14. It says, blessed is the unit, one who has set itself apart for the service, mm -hmm. the pleasure of Almighty Yahweh, whose hands have done no Torah-less deeds, yeah. Yeah. nor have imagined wicked things against Almighty Yahweh, for to him shall be given the special gift yeah. of Imuna, of Imuna, Yisraeli. And an inheritance in the great tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh, more acceptable in his mind. And I want to read verse 15. For the fruit of tub labors, there are renowned. And the root of wisdom and understanding, it shall never, it shall never fail. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. I have more here, Yisrael, y'all, but I, I want to just bring this to a close Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to close right here in Habakkuk. 
Second Habakkuk, chapter 1. This is concerning the wickedness of the land and Yahweh's vengeance executed. But still, he waited by um, through Imunah, never waving, never failing, concerning the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He says here in 2 Habakkuk, yeah. chapter 1, he said, I will stand on my watch. And we must understand the things that had happened even before he made this statement. He said, I will stand upon my watch. A watchman, one that is faithful, he stands in his place and he is not moved. A warrior, he stands his place and he's ground and nothing moves him even unto the death. So Habakkuk said, I will stand, I will wait upon my watch and set me upon the tower. He said, and I will watch and I will see what he shall say unto me. So him even knowing the promises of Almighty Yahweh. And those things that have been established, he yet waited patiently for those things to be open and revealed unto him. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Yeah. He said, and Yahweh, he answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads it. It has to be something that is very distraught or is very fearful that one would run as he reads it. But yet even at this, he stood, he remained by Imuna. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and it shall not lie. Although it tarry, he said, although it tarry, it is, what's the expression I'm looking for? It is, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like when you make a deposit in the bank and it doesn't show up, you don't see it, but you know it's coming. What is the word I'm looking for? It is imp imp impounding or it's pending. As the judgment of your Almighty Yahweh, it is pending. You may not see it coming. And even the wicked, because they're not um, judged expediently, they don't believe Yahweh is going to stand by his word. So Habakkuk said, yet here is this vision. It is set for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Should not we have the Amunah to stand and wait patiently? We must wait patiently. We must fight. We must war, Yisrael. It shall wait patiently, and when it comes, it shall not lie. Though it tarry, he says, wait for it. Because in it, it will surely come and will not tarry. Behold, the nephesh which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall have his imuna. Yes. So we are just, we stand patiently upon the Torah of the mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh, and we continue, even though we may slow down or even stumble, that we get up and we continue. Yes. And that's what Yahweh has laid for us, Israel, yes. that we stand by imuna. Hallelujah. So let us stand, let us be joyful and what Yahweh has done. Let us remember the offering in Yahshua HaMashiach and prepare ourselves for this, this time that we deny ourselves. You can start now. It's just for a time of day, Yisrael, but you can start now, denying certain things, preparing your love and your, your heart for the cleansing as we enter into this celebration, this feast, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We do baruch you that listen in my via live stream. Shabbat Shalom to you all. Yeah. And let us stand to our feet, Israel. If there are any questions of times or anything like that, it's all on the website, Israel, YahwehSword.org. Yes. So you can go there. There are many messages, even on this subject. And just listen. Take heed. Yes, listen. And I promise you, it will bless your nephew, Israel, if Hallelujah. you will open your mind, your love, unto the Torah, the Mishvah of yes. Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we do told that you will rock you, Abba Yahweh, for this time. That you have given us, Abba Yahweh, that we are able to bring an offering of Todah to your bear, Abba Yahweh. And ever as we look over our lives, Abba Yahweh, today, Abba Yahweh, we do barak you and we repent, Abba Yahweh, before oh, yes. your throne. We repent, Abba Yahweh, oh, even as yes. we stand with our hands raised, showing, Abba Yahweh, there's nothing we have, Abba Yahweh, against your Mishra, your Torah. 
And we ask, Abba Yahweh, you continue to rain down your fire for Hashemayim to cleanse us, Abba Yahweh. And that your word will continually go forth to prepare and wash us, Abba Yahweh, by the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach. So in all things, Abba Yahweh, we barak you, Abba Yahweh. We told you, in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. We ask you to take those, Yahweh, that has gathered with us, those that have traveled to listen with those on live stream, hold safe, Abba Yahweh. And Yahshua's precious and mighty name, hallelujah, 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 Yahweh, hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisrael, Shabbat Shalom.